The United States military has been invited to build bases in the western Pacific nation of Palau, located in the heart of the region where Washington is trying to secure a presence to push back against Chinese influence. In a letter to U.S. Defense Secretary Mark Asper, Palau's president expressed interest in the U.S. building joint-use military facilities, including land bases, port facilities and airfields. Although Palau is an independent nation, it has no military. The U.S. is responsible for the country's defense under a 1994 Compact of Free Association signed with Washington. This new move comes as Beijing continues to shore up its presence in the Pacific through government ties, their One Belt, One Road project, and an interest in expanding their military presence in the region. So is a U.S. presence in the Pacific enough to counter China's aggressive moves in the territory? And what's at risk if China is successful in dominating the region? Well, joining me now is Craig Singleton, adjunct fellow and expert on China at the Foundation for Defense of Democracies. Mr. Singleton, thank you for your time today. Thanks, Nima. So what does China's growing presence in the Pacific mean for the United States and the world in general? It's difficult to understate the geopolitical significance of the region. In addition to being tremendously resource rich, a huge percentage of global trade flows through these waters. Now, the United States' ability to project power and to respond to humanitarian crises is dependent upon its ability to freely crisscross the region. So if anything were to impede that movement, such as the development of a Chinese military base in the Pacific, that would have huge ramifications for U.S. force posture, not only in the southern and western Pacific, but in the greater Indo-Pacific region as well. Now, China has been making moves to grow its presence in the Pacific region for years now. So why has it taken so long for the U.S. to catch up? So after 9-11, the, the U.S. was obviously preoccupied fighting the counterterrorism mission in the Middle East. Now, President Obama, for his part, attempted to engineer a pivot towards the region, but it never really materialized as his administration was a lot more focused on securing an Iranian nuclear deal. Two recent issues, though, have sort of refocused the conversation on the Pacific. The first is tacit acknowledgement within the United States that the military gap between the United States and China was shrinking very fast. And the second is China's belligerent activity over the last few months throughout the China Sea, uh, South China Sea, rather, uh, to include sinking of Vietnamese fishing vessels and sending an armed fleet uh, to confront a Malaysian oil and gas development project that taking place. All of that has sort of refocused the conversation and really forced policymakers in Washington to give the region a fresh look. Now, is a U.S. military investment in Palau enough to secure a dominant presence in the Pacific? I'm sure the news uh, from Palau was met with a lot of excitement in the Pentagon, but it's really unclear whether this is enough to change the balance of power or to significantly increase U.S. military capabilities in the region. Remember, the United States already maintains a pretty sizable presence, including uh, several hundred troops in the Philippines right next door to Palau. The greater concern is if China is able to establish a military base in one of the other islands in the region, perhaps one that doesn't recognize Taiwan or a country that's been on the receiving end of Chinese largesse from China's One Belt, One Road initiative program. That sort of a development would send alarm bells throughout both Washington and Canberra. And is there a way that Western nations can unite to send a clear message about upholding democracy in the region? The United Nations General Assembly, which is set to kick off this week, represents a really great opportunity for all the countries of the world to get together to discuss this very issue. The biggest thing that's at risk here is U.S. and international credibility uh, throughout the world. In 2016, the International Tribunal for the Law of the Seas invalidated China's claims throughout the South China Sea. China rejected the ruling, and since that time has sort of armed several of these artificial land features throughout the region with surface-to-air missiles. They've also engaged in all these other belligerent and sort of aggressive activities against other neighbors in the area. So what the upcoming UN General Assembly really does is it provides the venue, the platform, to both call out China's aggressive activities, its a rejection of international law, but also provides an opportunity for countries in the West to engage with these Pacific Island leaders and to really discuss how we can go about helping them fight some very, very legitimate problems that they're facing to include climate change, which is sort of wreaking havoc throughout the Pacific. All right, Mr. Singleton, we've got about 15 seconds here, but you did mention the importance of political relationships as well as a military presence in this game. Can you quickly tell us why that's important? 
At the end of the day, China's ability to establish a military presence is about host country receptivity. The host countries have to give China the opportunity. And in that sense, the United States and the West have a lot more to offer than what China does. And so there's a real opportunity here to kind of shift the ground and shift the floor on China and actually resolve some of the key problems in the area. All right, we'll be right back, everyone.